This video will show a derivation of the conservation of mass. I've chosen the conservation form of the equation, uh, but the non-conservation form could also easily be derived. Comparing the two methods when it comes to numerical methods, the conservation form is usually preferred for all dependent variables, especially when we have strong discontinuities in the flow. So let's begin by looking at the small volume element fixed in space with sites dx, dy, dc. We have flow going through this volume element, in this case from left to right. Then the physical principle states that the accumulation of mass in this volume element equals the flow of mass into the element minus the flow of mass out of the element. And the accumulation of mass in the volume element um, okay, so first of all we have to define the mass in the volume element and the, the mass is given by the density of the fluid times the volume of, of the fluid and the volume in this case is given by dx dy dc right so the accumulation of mass in the volume element that's the time derivative of rho v so this is the time derivative of rho dx dy dc and we see that dx dy dc that's not a function of time so it's constant in time so let's just write this as d partial rho or partial t times dx dy dc so this is the accumulation of mass in the volume element then we look at the flow of mass into the volume element minus the flow of mass out of the volume element so perhaps we should start by defining the mass flow in this case uh, for fluid we have the fluid density times the fluid velocity times uh, some cross-sectional area. So this is the mass flow. And if we look at the units, we have kilos per meter cubed times meters per second times meter squared. And if we simplify that, we will get kilos per second. So that's the units. And the What's noteworthy here is to look at the velocity. It, it should be normal to this cross-sectional area that we're looking at. So uh, normally the x velocity is defined by u. So u, v, w are the components of the velocity vector. And the area, in this case, should be the cross-sectional area that we see for instance on this surface or on this surface that would be normal to the x velocity component okay so we could also define the mass flux and that's just the mass flow rho ua divided by the area so that's rho u and if we look at the units it's kilos per meter cube times meters per second and that is kilos per second times meter squared so mass flow per unit area okay so what flow do we have in the into the volume element let's assume here just arbitrarily that uh, the flow is going in the uh, increasing uh, positive axis direction so we have flow going into the volume element here and flow going out of the volume element if we're looking in the x direction uh, in the y direction similarly uh, we have flow going into the 
volume element from bottom to top going out of the volume element and in the C direction goes in on the back side comes out in the front so uh, if we're looking in the X direction we have first we have row u a at the position x so assume that the surface is positioned at x and that's going into the volume element and out of the volume element is row u a at x plus dx so at this position so then we have to uh, make some assumption on how this varies uh, and in this case let's assume that we can approximate Uh, the value on the right hand side here with just a first order Taylor expansion uh, using the value at the left hand side of the volume element and the derivative of that value at the left hand side so then rho u a at x plus dx equals rho u a at x plus the derivative partial rho u a at x or partial x times dx in a similar manner we can do this for uh, the y and c directions as well so in the y direction uh, now we're moving from y to y plus dy so the flow going in uh, to the bottom area here equals rho v a at y And it's in a similar manner as in the x direction, we approximate the outgoing flow here by first order Taylor expansion. So we have the outgoing flow as rho v a at y plus dy equals rho v a at y plus partial rho v a y or partial y dy okay finally we'll have the c direction and now we're moving from c to c plus dc so we're looking at the inflow coming from this area and the outflow coming from this area so the ingoing flow is rho uh, w a at c and the outgoing flow at rho w a c plus dc equals rho w a at c plus partial rho w a at c over partial c dc so if we add the inflow uh, and sub subtract the outflow we will end up with for the x direction rho u a at x uh, minus uh, rho u a at x plus 
the partial derivative here of rho u a at x or partial x dx plus uh, the y directional flow rho v a at y minus rho v a y plus partial rho v a at y or partial y dy plus the c directional flow rho w a at c minus rho w a at c plus partial rho w a at c partial c dc and here we can do some simplification and remove some of the terms right that cancel out mm -hmm. we end up with an expression where we have minus partial rho u a over partial x dx minus partial rho v a at y or partial y dy minus partial rho w a at c partial c dc now let's have a look at the cross-sectional areas here to the flow the area at x equals dy times dc and the area at y equals dx times dc and the area at c equals dx times dy and we can also see that uh, the cross-sectional area is constant here for instance in the x direction it's constant with respect to x so uh, we can move it out of the derivative here similar goes for the area in the y direction and the, in the c direction so uh, they're not functional they're normal direction mm. So, this means that we have minus partial rho u over partial x times dx dy dc minus partial rho v over partial y dx dy dc minus partial rho w over partial c dx dy dc so that was the inflow and outflow of the system so if we add that together with the accumulation of mass given before as partial rho over partial t uh, that equals the inflow and outflow so we have minus partial oh, we have dx dy dc also and the inflow is minus partial rho u or partial x dx dy dc minus partial rho v or partial y dx dy dc minus partial rho w or partial c dx dy dc just let's divide by the volume and remove that then we end up with an expression could can be written as partial rho over partial t plus partial rho u over partial x plus partial rho v over partial y plus partial rho w or partial c and that's equal to zero 
So this is the conservation form. of the, the, the continuity equation in Cartesian coordinates.